Hey folks, Poverty Point Customs here. Well, it's a rainy day outside, so what we're going to do is some maintenance to our little outboard motors here. So we have a 2015, a 2011, and a 2020 outboard. Two Yamahas and a Honda 2.3. So this is going to be a two-part video. We're going to do the Yamahas in the first video. We're going to do the engine oil and the lower end uh, oil. And then the next video is going to be doing the engine oil and lower end oil in the Honda. So we're going to pop off the covers. So you can take off your oil fill cap. So as you can see, I have the motors tilted slightly. When the oil is draining, it's going to drain more straight down instead of on part of the engine casing. So on the same side as your shifter, if you look right up in here, that's where you drain the oil. That's going to be a 10 millimeter. All right, so just make sure you have an oil pan underneath of it. And we're going to use a 10 millimeter socket to uh, take the drain bolt out. So once it stops dripping, you can clean off your bolt and reinstall it. Just make sure to clean off this area. So because I have two identical motors, everything I do on this one, I'm going to do the same on the other one. So on the side of the motor, the uh, recommended oil is 10W30 or 10.40 and 0.35 liters or 0.37 US quarts. So we're going to use a 10W30. I've been using this Motomaster 10W30 for years and it's worked great. The easiest way to do your oil measurement is if you can get one of these little squeeze bottles, as you can see it has a measurement on the side, it goes up to 250 milliliters. So we're going to put in 250 milliliters and then add another 100. And that will be the exact amount that this oil requires. So I put in 350 milliliters of oil, now we're going to reinstall the oil cap. So we can put the cover back on. So a lot of people miss the grease points. There's one here by the shifter. And just below the shifter there's another one right there. So we're going to grease these. As well, you want to put a little bit of grease on here. I'm going to use white lithium grease. This is where the where this rotates when you're putting it in reverse. So you get some grease around here. And also any little areas where your cables and shifter shift linkage is at, you want to make sure you spray a little bit of grease on those. thing we're going to do is a lower end fluid. While we have this up, you always want to take a look at your anode. Make sure it's in good condition. And you can also uh, pop off your propeller and lube the propeller shaft too. Now a little backstory: we bought this new in 2015. This wouldn't even have an hour's runtime, but we need to do some work on it because I believe the carburetor's gummed up. Bought this one two days ago and this would have maybe two or three hours on it. So this would be probably the sur first service on both engines. All right, so what we're going to do next is change the lower end fluid. So we're going to drain it. As you can see, this says oil in the oil level. So we're going to unscrew the bottom and then the top. It's a flathead screwdriver. As you can see, the oil is nice and clean. It's not all milky. So that just shows that there's been no water intrusion in the lower end. So we're going to let that drain. All right, so this is just barely dripping, so we're going to wipe this off. So before we fill up the gear oil, this is your drain, and you want to make sure you have a new washer on here. So we're going to be using an 80-90 weight oil. This is what we've been using up here in uh, Eastern Canada. This works great. Next year I'm going to switch everything over to synthetic, but this is what I had in the garage. So we're going to put 
it in here at the bottom and you're going to squeeze it till you see oil coming out from the top. There we go. What you're going to do next is pull this quickly away and have your bolt ready to go in there. But before you do that, you want to put in the top first because uh, it will actually cause it not to drain out too quick. You see some people filling it from the top, but you always want to fill it from the bottom because it blows and pushes the air out of the lower end. So don't fill it from the top, always fill it from the bottom. When it starts coming out there, put the top bolt in first and then pull away your oil jug and then put this one in quickly and that will leave the proper amount. So don't put this one in and then just fill it till it comes out here. So we're going to do the same to the, to the other motor. While we're working on this, we may as well lube the uh, propeller shaft too. So what you're going to do is remove this cotter pin, unscrew this, the propeller will pop right out, and we're going to put some white lithium grease in there. And it's quite simple to pop off. So we're going to put some white lithium grease all around the shaft here. I'm going to put some in here and some on this side. It will just protect it from rusting. All right, so lube your shaft well. Just want to point out too, if you want to change your spark plug, just pop off your cap. There's your spark plug right there. Just pop off your boot and you'll see there's a little access window right here. That's so you can get your spark plug wrench in to uh, take it out and uh, put a new one in. Literally takes 20 seconds to change the plug. And also too where you have the throttle linkage for the carburetor you can put a little bit of oil in there. A little uh, white lithium grease. Anyways, I hope this uh, video was helpful to some people out there on YouTube land. Again, this is how you change your engine oil, your lower end fluid, your oil, uh, grease your propeller, the grease points and lube points on your outboard engines. And this is maintenance I'll do minimum once a year. Now we would only put maximum a few hours on these a year. So when we change all the fluids, everything's still like nice and new. And we always run Supreme fuel in them, high octane fuel with uh, no ethanol in it. And again, I still need to do a little bit of work to get this one running. I believe the carburetor's all gummed up. It's my own fault for not uh, putting it away uh, properly and leaving old fuel with no stabilizer in it for approximately seven years. So we'll get this one going. This one here runs perfect. So again, if you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Any questions, comments, make sure you post them below. I read all the comments. And the next one we're going to work on is my Honda. And you can't see this yet. This is a new toy we got that was included with the Honda. So that will be in another video. And if anybody wants to see me get this old motor going, this is a 9 horsepower. I'd have to check check the make on the other side but if you want to see this uh, all tuned up and going this year make sure you leave a comment below and maybe this will be a little bonus video and we'll see if we can get this thing fired up